In ancient Mesopotamia, there were vampiric spirits known as the Akimu, which translates to that which was snatched away. They were spirits that once lived as human beings, but they died a horrific death, and they started scouring the land as if they were vampires seeking blood. The difference being, they were draining people of their life force instead. And if one of these vengeful spirits visited you, it meant that you were going to die. This is going to be a fun one. What is going on everybody? This is Israel, also known as Izzy Centric on social media, and today we are going to be talking about vampires. More specifically, some links between the Bible and vampires. Because I believe that vampires existed. And I think I can prove it. If you like this video, don't forget to hit like and please subscribe to this channel because all my new stuff is going to be mostly coming to YouTube. I've been at it for almost five years now and I'm finally starting to get the hang of this. As you guys may know, I have merch out. Can you see that? Yeah. Eat, sleep, hunt, demons, repeat. That is the one that I am wearing today. I have others throwing them up on the screen now for you guys to look at. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk vampires. You know what I find most interesting about the Akimu? They could actually feed on someone's emotion, make someone ill-tempered, and attach themselves to people. And if it sounds like I'm actually describing demons, well, I kind of am. The difference is the origin of the Akimu. As I've stated in my previous video, demons are the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim. Nephilim being half-angel, half-human hybrids. And what if when the Nephilim died, they continued doing the same thing that they were doing when they were alive? Would that make sense? Let me show you what I mean. This is 1st Enoch 7, 3 through 6. They consumed all the acquisitions of men. And when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. And they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish, and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. I haven't had steak tartare in a long time. Steak tartare? Oh yes, steak tartare. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. The Nephilim were cannibals when they were on this earth. And speaking of flesh and blood, compare that to what Jesus said when he was on the earth. What did he say about his flesh and blood? As scripture states, Jesus broke the bread and said, this is my body. As he did with the wine, he gave out the wine and said, this is my blood. Then we have Jesus giving himself up on the cross and dying for the whole world. The Nephilim did the exact opposite of Jesus. Jesus gave his flesh and blood. The Nephilim took flesh and blood. The Nephilim took life. Jesus gave his life. The Nephilim were half divine and half human. Jesus was all divine and all human when he was on the earth. In a twisted way, the Nephilim, I believe, actually foreshadows the Messiah in its own dark, twisted, failed experiment kind of way. Jesus was everything that the Nephilim could not be. The very existence of the Nephilim was a slap in God's face. It's a perversion of everything that Jesus stands for. We can see it in movies now too. Look at the front cover of the film Interview with a Vampire. And what does it say? Drink from me and live forever. And what happens in that film? or book. They drink, they die, they come back to life. They are reborn, a new creature. It mimics Christianity itself, but in all the wrong ways. Is that a coincidence? I mean, even Leviticus 17.11 says the blood makes atonement for the soul. Yeah, I think Anne Rice knew what she was doing. And hey, how about this one? This was said to Noah right after the flood. But you must not eat meat that still has its lifeblood in it. Yeah, that tracks. And look, vampires feeding on people's blood? That actually goes back to a short story, The Vampire. Vampires not liking sunlight? Nosferatu, a 1922 film. And vampires not liking garlic actually goes back to uh, a Romanian legend by the name of the Strigoi. Which ironically enough, that urban legend birthed The Vampire, the short story. Which that short story then was the inspiration for Bram Stoker's Dracula. 
Which, by the way, is the reason why vampires don't like crosses. And on top of all of that, it should be noted that vampires requiring an invitation to come into a space is not fiction. That belief comes from a vampirologist by the name of Leo Alatius. Alatius. His name will go here. <laughs> and this was back in the 17th century. With all that being said, does scripture support any of this? Well, demons need an invitation to come in. Um, that's kind of a given. They're known for this. Matthew 23, 43 through 45 compares a person to a house. And we're over here comparing demons to vampires. And we covered the scriptures on blood already, as well as the blood in First Enoch. How about sunlight? That's an easy one. In him was life, that life was the light of all mankind. John 1, 4. As we established earlier, if vampires go back to the Nephilim, then it would make sense why Jesus would be their ultimate weakness. They are a failed copy-paste version of him, which would make them fear crosses too. There's your reason for crosses. What Jesus did on that cross, dying for the sins of humanity, the grave not being able to hold him, coming back three days later. The Nephilim could not come back. And garlic? No idea. And you can't find that in scripture. I guess you'd have to go visit Romania and find out. Sorry, Andrew Tate. Pizza time. We'll see if that joke sticks. I freaking wrote it back in January. So that is the foundation of my thesis on vampires and their ties to the Nephilim. It's my reason for believing that vampires are real, or at least they were real at one point in time. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you are interested in this kind of stuff. Sometimes I do paranormal skits. Sometimes I do serious stuff. Sometimes I get super serious about stuff. But for the most part, I try to keep it lighthearted on here and I like, I like telling my jokes. I enjoy kicking back and just relaxing. What do you think I should do a video on next? Should I do one on aliens? Maybe I should do one on zombies, if there's anything about zombies. Mermaids, we could do something on mermaids. There's a, a couple stories on werewolves even. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. Um, this was great, this is one of my favorite topics, honestly. Um, <laughs> but I gotta get going, so I will see you all in the next video. Take care, God bless.